reading research papers is difficult and it becomes even harder if you don't know what to look for in a research paper. This video is for PhD students who are doing literature review as part of their PhD studies and I am going to tell you 5 important things which you should be looking for in any research paper when you are doing this for literature review. And we are starting right after this short break. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Dahir and if this is your first time, please hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new video on this channel every Tuesday and Friday. I have more than 30 videos on my YouTube channel regarding PhD studies and I cannot summarize all that information in this single video. Most of those videos have PhD in their title and you can search this on my YouTube channel. There is also a PhD playlist but one video I would like to recommend which you must watch after watching this video. And together these two videos will help you do your literature survey. And the title of that video is something like 7 step process of doing a literature review. And watch this video till the end because at the end of this video I am going to give you 3 bonus tips to read a research paper. If you watch this video full, YouTube will send this to a lot of other PhD students and I will get a lot of view time which will help me grow my channel. So this is a win-win situation for all of us. And before we talk about what are those 5 critical things you should look for in a research paper, I would like to mention three more things and I will call them A, B and C. So the A is that researchers can read papers for various reasons. If you are writing your own paper, you might be interested in reading a research paper for any particular section of your paper or you might want to read a paper only to stay abreast with the current state of knowledge. But this particular video is only for those PhD or research students who are reading research papers as part of their literature review. Now B is the second thing that before you start reading any research paper, you must qualify that paper for reading. You must decide whether or not this paper is worth reading and I have explained this in one of other videos. So I am assuming that you have qualified this research paper for reading. And now part C, the third thing which we want to discuss before we go to the actual topic is that you should understand why reading a research paper is so difficult. Because if you know why it is difficult, you can find a solution to that. And I will also give you a solution. So there are three important reasons why reading a research paper is difficult in particular in the beginning of your career as a PhD student. Now the first thing is that authors of that paper they assume a lot of background knowledge which you as a new PhD student probably don't have. The second reason reading a research paper is difficult because the mathematical expressions are very condensed. They write a very simple looking expression but actually that expression contains a whole story and sometimes that expression requires a knowledge of more than one subject areas which is very hard for you as a new student. And the third reason why a research paper is difficult for you is that in the beginning of your PhD studies, it is almost impossible for you to understand the figures and the images presented in the paper. It is very difficult to make sense of those images and those graphs. A very simple looking graph can be so important that it can award someone a PhD degree, but you don't understand that. You don't know the significance of that particular graph. Now, what is the solution? Now, one solution is that you address all of these three issues one by one. But the simplest solution is that if you read a lot and you take notes as I am going to show you in this video, then after probably six to nine months, you will be an expert reader and you will comprehend the literature. You will understand the research papers very well. Now we are coming to the topic of this video. What are those five things you should be looking for in a research paper? And one thing I would like you to do is that whenever you read a research paper, you follow these five important points and then you write two lines for each of this point. And then you add five more lines at the top of these 10 lines and put some background information there. So I normally don't delay the main topic, but this topic was so important 
that I wanted to explain these few things before I talk about the main topic. And now let's talk about the main topic. Now the first thing you should be looking for in any paper is where this paper fits in the bigger picture of your research area. I have explained this in other videos that you must understand the bigger picture of your research and this paper will fit somewhere in that picture otherwise it will not qualify. So after writing five lines of background you write two lines about this that where this paper fits in the bigger picture of your research. Now the next thing you should be looking for is what is the key contribution of this paper. Now author will explain this uh, most probably in the abstract and in the conclusion of their papers but also in the middle of their papers where they are going to explain this in further details like in discussions and you should reach to that point and try to figure out what is the key contribution because sometimes the key contribution which they are telling you is not the actual key contribution they are over claiming something because when we are reading a paper we are trying to challenge the paper and this is the purpose of this whole exercise so try to write down their key contribution in your own words now the third thing you should be looking for is what are the key assumptions what are the important assumptions they are making now author make assumptions due to various reasons sometimes they simply want to make some assumptions uh, because they want to linearize a non-linear problem for example but hiddenly they are trying to make some other assumptions and this is the key thing you should be looking for most of the time authors will not explain what are the hidden assumptions they are making in their research and if you can figure out that hidden assumptions because our job is to challenge their assumptions not only the assumptions which they have made but also some hidden assumptions try to find out it will be harder in the beginning but very easy in the middle of your PhD so what are the key assumptions whether these assumptions are valid or not how can you challenge these assumptions so write two lines about these in very precise manner now the fourth thing you should be looking for is what are the points where authors of the paper contradicts contradicts their own statements in the same paper or in the previous papers or contradicts with other researchers in the same field of research and when you have read few papers you will understand that what are some of the well established facts in your field of research and whether or not these authors are contradicting those established research or not and this is an important thing you should be looking for now the last important thing which you should be looking for in any research paper is that how the experimentation was performed what instruments were used what was the process and how the conclusion was drawn because you want to challenge this as well or you might want to modify this or you might want to confirm this so this is also very important that you understand their experimentation process so these were the five things write two lines about every one of these five lines about background you have 15 lines summary of your research paper which you have read now what are those three tips because the video is becoming very long so I will quickly give these uh, three tips if you want me to discuss further put in the comments and uh, we will discuss in the comments or maybe in another video so the first tip is if you don't understand anything forget about it go on reading never stop the second tip is don't follow the references given in the paper in the paper you will find many citations reference to other papers don't follow them currently you are making a summary of this paper if you don't understand or you have to read a paper you will do it later on third tip is whatever question comes to your mind write it down then when you finish making the summary of the research paper you sort out what are the two critical questions you want to ask then send the email to authors first author most probably sometimes the second author so send them an email and ask the questions so these are my three important tips so that is it for this video I hope you like this video if so please give it a thumbs up thanks for watching and see you next time now the video has finished now and you can move on to other videos or whatever you want to do but I want to say something about my courses 
I have courses on various platforms and as I have already mentioned in one of my videos that you don't have to buy uh, all of those courses if you are regularly following me on this channel because I share all my knowledge on my YouTube channel because I believe that by sharing your knowledge your knowledge increases and if you buy my course you will find the same videos on my YouTube channel and same videos on my course maybe few extra but mostly same videos now there are two important questions here number one why you should buy a course if everything is on my YouTube channel the only reason you might consider buying a course is that you will get all that information at one place and well organized manner for example I am preparing a course for a new PhD student and I will name it as PhD student induction course and all these videos which you are watching here I will put all these videos in that course so a new student can get all that information at one place and organized in a manner which I would like you to watch so this is the only benefit you get so this is their advantage and my benefit is that I will earn some extra income to support this channel now the second question is where to buy my courses because there are a lot of platforms so my suggestion is that if you want to buy a course then you should buy from my own website which I have put a link in the description of my videos so you can see the description of any video and I think the second link is where all my courses are hosted and you can purchase my courses from there and from time to time I send my coupons to my email subscribers where you can get 50% discount or so so if you are interested in that the first link is how to join my email list so you can join my email list because in the beginning I was joining many uh, teachers platforms but I am uh, unable to update my courses on all of those platforms because it's just too much work you have to update videos on each of those platforms then there are branding issues so because I cannot update all my courses on all of these platforms so there will be a differences in number of videos on every platform because when uh, my subscribers they see the difference on various platforms so they ask this question where should I buy so this was a, a brief introduction to my courses thanks for your time